I knew even at the, the at the time, you know, um, you know, both in undergrad and before undergrad, that I really wanted to make films. Um, but it was an investigation about what kind of films do I want to make? How do I want to make them? Well, they're sort of like, I mean, for me, shorts are sort of sketches, you know, and whereas uh, the features are more paintings. When you have limited resources, you have to push so much harder in specific ways that it allows you to see things that you might not otherwise. And I've been fortunate, you know, working in the film industry, you know, when you have the ability to bring in some specific solution, you don't necessarily think of one that might be more creative. When I wrote this, this script for Diamond on Vinyl, I was very specifically writing it to my target budget. While I was writing it, I was searching for the locations, you know, and finding locations that I could either have for free or for very little money, right? I was looking, you know, at, okay, what kind of, you know, props do I have access to? You know, yes, creatively, what's the story that I want to tell? But also, from a resources standpoint, how can I tell it in a way that is accessible to me as a filmmaker, that I'm capable of, of putting something together that I'm proud of at the end, and not look shoddy? How do I push narratively to the point where the audience does not care? They're going to let go of the fact that, you know, my, you know, they, they can acknowledge that the resources are not a hundred million dollars, and yet still be engaged in the same way that they might be at a hundred million dollar film. With this film, for me, you know, with Diamond on Vinyl, I, I felt like I hadn't yet made a feature that um, I, a narrative feature that I was completely happy with. And so I felt like, um, you know, I didn't really uh, feel like I could have others fit, fit, you know, pay the bill, right? So what I ended up doing was honestly working a lot of jobs. You know, I, I worked three, three or four jobs for several years. Um, you know, and, and was making, you know, very zero-sum decisions. You know, we're going to do, uh, we're not going to go on this vacation, we're going to have this overnight here, we're going to not go out to dinner, we're going to, you know, make the food at home. We're going to, I mean, it sounds silly, but you make those decisions over a long enough period, right, and suddenly you have your budget. Before, where, you know, you, you, you do fundraising and you find external sources and things like that, and honestly, some of the filmmakers I've worked with that have done that, they don't necessarily watch their budgets as closely as when you yourself worked for every penny. You know, I've worked on a huge number of films, you, you, The Red, The Alexa, etc. Um, so it wouldn't have been outside of my comfort zone to work with a camera like that. But it wasn't practical. It didn't serve the story. It didn't serve what I was trying to do. And so despite the fact that like maybe I could have gotten one cheaply or I could have done that, it didn't make sense, you know, it was like, it was, it would have been counterproductive. And I think that like, for me, that is actually one of the big things that I see over and over again when I talk to young filmmakers that are trying to make films on extremely low budgets and micro budgets. Um, if you're serving the film, you have to always ask why, what is the decision I'm making? Why am I making this decision? Does it serve the film that I'm trying to make? You know, and you need to ask that about everything from the way that you're your casting or the way that you're finding locations to what camera you're using, um, yeah, all, all those things.